Hey everyone, it's Rob here and we're back with yet another severe weather update as the Storm Prediction Center has issued an enhanced risk of severe weather including a large 5% risk for tornadoes across a majority of Iowa. I don't want to keep you waiting any longer so let's go ahead and get right into the weather models. So here we're looking at the Storm Prediction Center's day one outlook. We can see a small little enhanced risk uh, covering south central I Iowa. Um, and we can see that 5% risk covers a majority of central and uh, southeastern Iowa, um, just cutting off that northwest uh, part quite a bit. That's not the only risk we have, though. We also have a slight risk for tomorrow, Sunday, which encompasses uh, part of the Ozarks region into uh, the southern plains of southeast Oklahoma and northeast Texas. And also on our day three, we have another slight risk of severe weather spanning all the way from Mississippi to Southeast Ohio and West Virginia. So we've got uh, three straight days of back to back to back uh, severe weather risks. So here, here we are looking at the HRRR again. This is our, uh, our high resolution rapid refresh model. So what this does is this gives us uh, a very high resolution hourly picture of what the radar might look like. Uh, <clears throat> at this point, um, it's hard to know exactly where the storms will fire exactly, but this gives us a general idea of what could happen. <clears throat> so we see here by uh, the early afternoon portions, I think this is around 1 or 2 p.m., that surface low is entering west central Iowa along with a dry line and then we have a front as well which is moving southeast so this is considered our triple point whenever you have a cold core setups like this it's very important to storm chase the triple point because um that is the point where you have the surface low the dry line and the cold front all meeting so you have the best forcing for storms to create robust updrafts um, you also have the best lower level wind shear and uh, you also have uh, some very steep low level lapse rates in here which is helping to aid that uh, that instability and also lift those uh, the updrafts and the turn in the atmosphere so um, and we can see this is quickly going to form uh, a couple cells down the line this latest HRRR is showing a little bit less linear of a setup and more of you know, maybe three, four kind of uh, cell clusters that fire up through here. And I think there will be a two to three hour window where we do have some pretty good chances of seeing a couple tornadoes, actually. Um, these storms will probably be relatively low precipitation. Um, you should be able, if there's a tornado on the ground, for the most part, you should be able to see it. Um, for everybody chasing out there today, there's a good chance that there will be some very photogenic tornadoes, to be completely honest. Um, but we can see, uh, this, uh, there's probably, like I said, a good three hour window probably for these, uh, tornadoes to be, a, a, or these storms to be a little more supercellular, a little bit more prone to tornadoes, and then they will quickly grow upscale into more of a, of a linear setup, and then sort of this, uh, this squall line, which will move through Illinois and then fall apart as we move into the overnight hours, but... Um, like I said, storms are probably expected to fire just after noon here, so within an hour actually of uploading this, we likely will have storms already firing. Um, and then uh, very quickly, probably by uh, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, these storms will be growing upscale into more of a linear setup, and uh, that will probably hamper the chances of us seeing uh, uh, any tornadoes at that point. But... Um, Let's go ahead and move over here to energy helicity so we can get an idea of where our best uh, energy and uh, wind shear overlap. And it looks like, again, just west of Des Moines, we have just near that surface low as well. That's where our triple point meets. That is our best chance of probably seeing a, a supercell that could produce um, maybe even a couple of tornadoes, actually, given some of the hodographs that we're seeing today. Um, some of the uh, the soundings that are on the shortest term models the hodographs look very supportive of uh, organized rotation and including very supportive of supercellular storms producing tornadoes so in that best time frame you can see once once we get this at this point 
this is when the storm's starting to squall out. So even though we are lighting up the models uh, with higher values here, um, this is whenever things start to sort of squall out and uh, becomes a much more linear setup. And you can see that just along the, the whole dry line is where we're going to have that, that linear mode of storms. Um, and then it quickly fades as it moves off into Illinois. Um, and then we're going to be switching our focus uh, from today into Sunday. So we can see here Sunday, there's uh, probably just some remnant precipitation falling. And around mid-afternoon, some of this will probably be uh, thunderstorms right here along uh, the uh, where the... Um, for the tri-state tornado tracked through um and these will quickly grow into a very linear uh, line of storms here you can see another surface low is going to be tracking here and this is what's sparking that severe weather that's tracking through southeast oklahoma northeast texas all the way through the ozarks here and as that surface low deepens and pushes this line a little bit there will be the chance of us seeing the possibility of a couple spin-up tornadoes through here, but this is a much more linear event. We don't really have much of a chance or even any sort of window of seeing um, supercells that are producing tornadoes. So this is probably going to be much more of a wind event, and this includes uh, southern Indiana all the way down into probably uh, southern Arkansas. And also, <clears throat> on the northern end of this, so this uh, for southeast of Michigan and in and along the Great Lakes, you're going to see some snow and some pretty heavy freezing rain from this. So it does have some winter storm implications as well. Um, and then as we move into Monday, where we have that, um, that other severe weather risk, you can see this line of storms kind of dies out a little bit overnight and then sort of... Uh, um, builds back up again, regains its strength here through uh, Tennessee and Kentucky, moving into West Virginia. Again, these storms won't have as much of a tornado risk as the storms do today. However, uh, they will produce uh, potentially some damaging wind gusts and uh, maybe a couple spin-up tornadoes here or there. Um, after that, our severe weather looks to get really quiet. Um, so this might be uh kind of the main show for a little while for our severe weather um and for those who are wondering these this line of storms is expected to kind of fire and, and regrow in strength uh, right around noon tomorrow uh about 11 a.m to one at one o'clock p.m is when these storms will be moving through central to eastern kentucky uh in central to eastern tennessee and then move, making their way into west virginia right around uh, 2 to 3 p.m. So um, that's about all I have for you guys today. A little bit of a shorter video when compared to yesterday, but um, that's because we do have, uh, we have a little bit more of a defined um, idea of how things are going to go. Um, so just be ready within the next few hours. Uh, storms should be firing up in Iowa, and we're going to have multiple rounds of severe weather coming through. Um quite a bit of the country here over the next few days so um if you enjoy receiving severe and winter weather updates like this one then um uh, my best recommendation is to subscribe i try to offer my most authentic take on the models i try not to hype anything up too much I try to give you guys my honest opinion so um that's all we have for today so please stay safe out there and peace out